Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Happy Wellness Webinar Foundation Training, Move with Confidence. I am pleased to be able to introduce a longtime friend and physician assistant, John Mitchell. John Mitchell is a licensed physician assistant graduating from the Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine. He received his bachelor's in biology from Ursinus College and has worked in many areas of medicine, including at a toxicology center, small pharmaceutical company, and as an EMT and ER technician. It is with this diverse experience that John recognized the struggles of conventional medicine, where the emphasis was placed on treating symptoms of disease rather than the root causes. He quickly learned that the healthiest doctors or PAs have the healthiest patients, so set out to optimize his own health by learning from those at the top of their fields. During his research, John discovered foundation training a brand new movement program designed to reverse the damage created by our sedentary lifestyles. Within a few weeks of practice, John noticed himself standing taller, having increased flexibility, and feeling stronger. Realizing the power of this program, John quickly flew to Santa Barbara to get certified from this creator, Dr. Eric Goodman. Since then, John has worked with a diverse client profile, from triathletes all the way to those who can barely walk because of chronic pain. Regardless of their capability, the vast majority of his clients experience dramatic results in just a few weeks of practice. John currently works as a physician assistant at a substance abuse treatment center. He is also the co-founder of the website ReadyToTry.com, a site devoted to beginner triathletes. When John is not working, he enjoys cooking, spending time on the beach, being active, and playing with his puppy Bailey. I would like to remind you that this webinar is being recorded and we will email you a copy at the end. If you have any questions during today's webinar, please feel free to enter your questions into the questions box. At the end of the webinar, we will try to answer as many questions as possible. At this time, I would like to turn the presentation over to John, and again, thank you all for joining us today. Thanks, John. Can you hear me? Yep, everything's good. All right, so before we get started, I want to tell everyone a little story. So about two years ago, I was in Santa Barbara, and I met a man named Johnson. He was this soft-spoken, six-year-old Chinese man. He was about six feet tall, wearing some rimless glasses, and he had been working as a Wall Street executive for about 25 years. And I noticed that for someone his age, he, uh, he was moving pretty well, so we began kind of talking about it. And as it turns out, up until about six months prior, he was only able to stand for literally one minute without crying out in pain due to some back problems he had. And he tried everything. He went to three different doctors, including orthopedists, neurologists. He even spent hundreds and sometimes even thousands of dollars on Eastern medicine, like acupuncture, massages, yoga, you name it. Still, he never got any sustained relief. All his doctors kept telling him that he only, the only Thing he had left to do with surgery. But Jonathan was a smart man. He did his research and he realized uh, that the statistics for back surgery were pretty poor. And this is where the story gets pretty cool. So Jonathan was talking with his accountant of all people about his back problems and uh, his accountant recommended a book. And Jonathan was a little skeptical, but he was desperate. So he bought the book and started to do these exercises inside. Two weeks later, after daily practice, he woke up and stood in front of the mirror. After one minute, no pain. After two minutes, no pain. After five minutes, no pain. At ten minutes, he started crying. His wife, you know, upset, kind of came in and said, hey, what's wrong, what's wrong? And uh, she realized these were tears of joy. This was the first time in years that Jonathan felt true relief from his back pain. And I'm sure everyone's wondering, what was it that Jonathan was doing that three different doctors, thousands of dollars, and thousands of years of Eastern medicine could not. Well, I want everybody to keep listening because by the end of this talk, you are not only going to know Johnson's secret, but you're also going to know how to remedy your own pain, how to develop a newfound confidence in your body, how to improve your posture, how to increase some strength and flexibility, and how to get more overall enjoyment out of life, and all this in about 10 minutes a day. I'm also going to provide everyone at the end a complimentary gift uh, to which joined us today, so please don't leave early. 
And really quick, before we get going, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, you know, this webinar can be very different from the other ones that have been a lot invited so far, and uh, I'm really excited. I also want everybody to take out a pen and a piece of paper so you can take notes because you are going to learn some amazing things today. Let's dive in. So how many people on this webinar struggle with some sort of pain, whether it be neck, back, or knee pain? You're not alone if you answer yes. In a given year, 15 to 20 per percent of uh, people in the U.S. suffer from back pain. And that number believes up to 80 percent within a lifetime. And that is back pain. Pain in the U.S. is estimated uh, to cost roughly $600 billion annually in medical costs and lost productivity, which comes out to about $2,000 per person. And I kind of want to dig into this a little more because we always look at things from a financial perspective. It costs $2,000 per person, and that's a lot of money. That's the issue. But beyond the pain, we have to look at what the pain leads to. So when people are in pain, Mentally, they're, they are down. They are not able to do the things they want to do. They can't go on trips with their families. They can't drive in cars for a long period of time. And there is even more to this. So there was a recent TED Talk by a researcher named Amy Cuddy. And what she discusses is how our, our posture affects our mood. So when we are in pain, we often take a very compressed, very stolen posture. This posture starts to affect our physiology. So it should, what her research has shown is that stress hormone will go up when we're in a poor posture, that our, our hormones, our testosterone, will go lower, our immune system, our immune function will decrease. All of these things are affected by the way we move, by the way we, we interpret our world. And that's really the, the hidden cost of being in chronic pain. And hey, I think John? Two problem, so I, hey, John, could you share your screen with us? I, I don't know. Uh, you could accept the presentation. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't realize people were seeing it. Uh, good now? Perfect. Thanks. All right. Sorry about that, everyone. All right. So the true problem with pain is that few people actually understand what pain really is. Pain is a symptom. It is a warning sign that something deeper is wrong. So in medicine today, many people simply want to treat the pain without understanding why they are really hurting. Sure, we will go to a doctor and get diagnosed with arthritis or a disc herniation, but much more often than not, we kind of stop there. We will say, oh, my doctor said I have a disc herniation. He gave me some Vicodin, told me to follow up if it gets worse. The pain is gone with the Vicodin, so I guess that's it. If you want to fix a broken pipe, you do not put down paper towels around the leak and say, all right, that's it. That'll solve the problem for a few days. You fix the pipe. But similarly, if you have pain, you don't just pop an Advil and say, all right, all is good. We really need to find the root cause of what's going on. And I think one of our problems is few of us know to ask the right questions. So some of the questions I'd ask is, you know, why do I have a disc herniation? Or why does my knee hurt when I run? What can I do to fix this problem or at least prevent it from happening again? Are there any cultures where these types of injuries are very rare? What are, what are they doing differently? One of the main problems I see in medicine is that patients are not encouraged enough to advocate for themselves. The doctor speaks, the patient listens, and that's typically about it. Now, I think this is really the wrong approach. It is our right to ask questions, and in my personal and clinical experience, those who are willing to ask them those questions are the ones who get their problems resolved. So, to further my point, in her book, Radical Remission, Dr. Kelly Turner studied over a thousand cancer patients who had experienced radical and unexpected remissions and discovered nine commonalities amongst these patients. One of those was that their doctors labeled these patients as problem patients. They were skeptical, they asked a lot of questions, and they did their own research. So when all these patients were told that they had terminal cancer, they didn't just accept their doctor's word for it. They chose to fight for themselves, and they won. And I'm not going to say that uh, you need to be difficult or cantankerous with your, with your provider, but you should be asking questions. You should be looking into things more if you're not okay with it. Like, that is under your absolute right as a patient and just as a human in general. If you want to live life on your own terms, you need to ask questions. You need to be skeptical and you have to advocate for yourself, because nobody else is going to do that. And I, I think that goes for anything. Even what I'm saying today right now, question it, look it up, test it out, 
and really make a decision on your own. There's one man who kept asking a lot of these questions, uh, especially about the, the origins of, of his back pain, and that man was Dr. Eric Lindman. So Eric was in his mid-20s when he suffered excruciating back pain, and this was during chiropractic school. He was a big, muscular guy, spent a lot of time in the gym. He always saw himself as you know, a big, strong guy and couldn't understand why his back was giving him so much trouble. After visiting with the doctor, he was diagnosed with numerous disc herniations and degenerative disc disease. So if you look at this image, uh, this is Eric's MRI. And I want to show everybody first the, the three blue arrows. And those are just showing us what a disc somewhat should look like. His are still a little bit compressed, but that's what a, a disc should be. And a disc is in between those two ver vertebrae. If you look at the red arrow, however, that should be, there should be a, a disc there between his L5 and S1 vertebrae. There pretty much is nothing. They're pretty much right on top of one another. But this is a pretty big deal. and is probably one of the reasons why he was having so much pain. Given this imaging, he was urged to have surgery, which for a chiropractor is pretty much like asking a vegan to have a double bacon cheeseburger. So instead, Eric tried to fix his own pain. And uh, six years, thousands of hours of practice and research later, uh, Dr. Eric Goodman has made some amazing discoveries. He's also now pain-free and has been for many years, never needed surgery he discovered that there is one major cause of our increasing rates of chronic pain and injuries in the modern world, and it's not what you think it is. It's not old age, and it's not that we are living longer. This is our modern problem. This is our modern plague. Think about how often we sit when we wake up in the morning with some of the bathroom, we go to the bathroom. We sit while we're eating breakfast, and we drive in our car, we're sitting, we get to work, and we sit maybe for eight, nine hours a day, we come home, we're driving, and then as we eat dinner, we're sitting, and then maybe we'll sit on the couch and watch TV before we go to bed. I think it's very easy for us to forget about how much our life revolves around sitting. And uh, even just one hour of exercise a day is not going to offset the, you know, the, the numerous hours that we spend sitting in the same position. Never before in our history have we been so sedentary. Just a century ago, the majority of us were manual laborers. We didn't even have cars. Now it seems like almost all we do is sit. And I'm pretty sure that the majority of us are sitting right now. So let me explain to you why sitting so often causes a lot of problems. Think about gravity. It is all around us, literally pressing down on our bodies everywhere we go. Our bodies were once good at pressing back up against gravity. The more active we were, the more we used our bodies, the stronger we were, and that made us much more resilient. The more often we sit, the less able we are to resist gravity. And this is because as we sit, our muscles become very imbalanced. And something that has actually made things worse now in, our, in the recent decades is uh, texting. And it's really bringing our, our bodies even more compressed, rounding our shoulders. Our necks are starting to cream forward, forward even more. And it's accelerating this degenerative process. So this is explained very well by a prominent anatomical physiologist named Peter Egoscu. He created the Egoscu method, which is a great, great method. He explains that there are two stages that lead to muscle imbalances. First stage is the use it or lose it stage. So if you stop using a certain muscle in your body, the body stops sending nutrients there. Why waste energy? And that muscle will then become weak. So the more we sit, this weakening happens, and the main muscles required for structural support and stability muscles like the glutes, our hamstrings, hip flexors, and lower back muscles. The second stage is this compensation stage. So now that we have weak muscles, they no longer function properly. So when we go to move as we were intended to do, like if we were going to run, for instance, we can no longer use these muscles. To compensate for this, the body will borrow surrounding muscles to perform that movement. So instead of relying on the glutes and hamstrings to power our running, our body will recruit the hip flexors, the abdominal muscles, or other muscles to pull the legs forward. Over time, our body repeats these improper movements until they become our default movement patterns. So when I say a movement pattern, this is just a simple way of saying that it's a movement that we, uh, we do to carry out a specific function. So uh, running, lifting, jumping, these are all different types of movement patterns. Is everyone following here? As you can see, a lifetime of sitting has forced us to develop many improper movement patterns. Our muscles are constantly being asked to perform functions uh, they're not designed to do. 
And think about this. Think of how much stress is put on your muscles, on your joints, year after year. They're going to start wearing down after a while. And this is why we are getting hurt. This is why so many people have back pain, why so many of us are developing arthritis at an alarming rate. And uh, this kind of reminds me of a, a study that was, that was done in the mid-90s. And what happened was these doctors, these researchers, did, took MRIs of people with no back pain and MRIs in the lower back. And what they found was pretty interesting. Um, they found that 40% of people had one or more abnormalities within their spine without any pain. And a lot of people took this to mean that abnormalities in the spine, like disc herniation, were, were normal. And I, I, I disagree with that. I think it's a myth. I think we mistaken common versus normal. Just because something is common does not necessarily mean that it is normal. You know, not just because a lot of people have disc herniation doesn't mean that's the normal process. That's just something that happens. It is a byproduct of our modern lifestyle. And very interestingly, thanks to his own back problems, Dr. Eric Binden, whose who's MRI we just looked at earlier, realized this and he created foundation training. And foundation training is a modern remedy to a modern problem. You know, so if we didn't spend all of our time in a chair, this may not have been necessary. But now that we do, this has become extremely important. It is a set of integrative body weight that teach you how to naturally improve core muscular strength, balance, and flexibility. And this allows you to reduce pain and improve your performance. So when I say performance, it really means anything. It doesn't have to be something, some athletic endeavor. It can just mean lifting your children, gardening, just squatting down, very basic movements. And there are three unique characteristics that I really believe set foundation training apart from most other programs. So number one, I think it is, a, is whole body focus. <clears throat> and injuries and weaknesses in one area are often the result of imbalances in a different area. And this is really well said by uh, Dr. Rolf, the man who created Rolfing. He used to say, wherever you think it is, it ain't. So just because you have pain in one area does not mean that is the area where the imbalance is. So, for instance, if you've ever been a runner or you know runners, I'm sure you've heard of uh, someone with dynamic plantar fasciitis. And typically that presents as, as pain in the heel and is worse in the morning. And then as we start moving, it usually gets better. And then as it starts to slow down again throughout the day, and the pain gets worse and worse. And it can take a while to really heal completely. But what I've found with clients and what a lot of other practitioners have found as well is that plantar fasciitis, um, is often a, a result of imbalances above the foot, such as the muscles in the calf, the inner thigh, and the hip. So what foundation training does is it works your muscles as an integrated unit, addressing the imbalances globally instead of spot fixing one of the number of imbalances. So if you look at this slide here, the, the image of the, of the blue muscles, this is what, what we call the posterior chain. It's a group of muscles from the back of the head all the way down to the bottom of the feet. What we do is we focus on strengthening these muscles as, a, as an entire unit because that is the way the body is meant to move and that is how you get the best results. And these are also the ones that are often neglected because of our, our modern lifestyle sitting so much. So these are why we focus on these muscles to move. The second unique characteristic of foundation training is that it's easy. It is effective in less than 10 minutes of practice a day. And I know we're all super busy now, and, uh, but I'm fairly confident that everybody here can all find a, a fair 10 minutes throughout the day at some point. It's also very, uh, very accessible. There's no equipment involved, and the movements are very easy to perform. I think with a lot of other modalities, a lot of different exercise programs, people spend a lot of money initially on equipment, like bands and weights. Um, and this is not only expensive, but it also adds complexity. And if you talk to uh, you know, experts in the field of building habits and routines, like DJ Fogg and Charles Duhigg, they, they talk about limiting uh, barriers to entry and then you know, minimizing things. You really want to do the, the least amount possible initially to build up a routine, to build a habit. The simpler things are, the easier it is to do repeatedly. But the more complexity we add to something, the less likely we are to stick to it. And this is true for anything, whether it's dieting, exercise, or anything else we would like to do and make a habit. One of the personal trainers, that I met at my certification, that's a good story. Uh, he said, thanks to foundation training. This was the first time in 14 years that his clients actually did their homework. How amazing is that? In 14 years, this is the first time 
and he was able to give them something that they could take from and say, all right, I'm going to do this. And I really believe that the simplicity of these units is the reason why. The third unique character, and if, I want to show you on the picture here. So this is Eric Goodman uh, showing us a what we call a lunge pose. This is one of our one of our exercises, and he's using a you know a simple everyday move with a vacuum cleaner. So this is why I say it's simple. You can you can incorporate these movements pretty much into every everyday movement. And the third thing is, um, and this is my personal favorite, a foundation training gives you the tools to help yourself. Now I love. Uh, things like chiropractors, acupuncture, physical therapy, I think they can be an amazing tool. The only drawback, or one of the drawbacks is that um, you are often dependent on them to heal us. So you have to keep going back for them to heal you. Um, with foundation training, you learn how to heal yourself. And as I tell my clients often, like, my goal is for them not to need me. Because I truly believe that self-care is the best health care. And I really want to emphasize that. So I want to write this one down. Self-care is the best health care. If, if you want to get healthy, it has to start with you. So I'm sure everyone wants to hear about how foundation training works, so let's, let's get into that a little bit more. So I want to take everybody through a few exercises, and we're going to do it first, and then I'll explain it. So what I want everybody to do, if everyone is sitting, that's perfectly fine. I want everybody to sit up nice and tall. Make sure you're not using your back rest at all. And scoot your butt forward to the front of the chair. Make sure your feet are flat on the ground with your heels pressing down into the ground, and the feet are facing either straight ahead or even slightly turned in. And as you can see in the picture, I want you to take your thumbs and place them at the bottom of your rib cage. I want you to take your pinkies and put them at the top of your hip. And notice that space, that space between your hip flexors. I want you to get as much space in there as possible. And we want to keep that space. So from here, I want everybody to take three big breaths in through their nose, as big, wide of a breath as you can take, expanding your lungs, lifting your chest up nice and tall. As you breathe out, keep those ribs elevated, keep your stomach tense. And we're going to do this two more times. One more big breath in, expanding the lungs as wide and as tall as you can make it, really getting nice and tall. As you breathe out, keep those ribs up. And we're going to do this one more time. Big breath in through the nose. And then as you breathe out again, keeping the stomach tense, keeping the ribs up. As you breathe out, everybody relax. So as everyone can kind of feel a lot of different muscles getting involved just in that simple breath. And I know this sounds ridiculous, but your breath is the most essential part of structural integrity and is the ideal starting point in changing your movement pattern. So think about what happens when you sit, your shoulders roll inwards, your neck cranes forward, your pelvis becomes stuck, your back is often bent forward. You're, you're compressed. So now think about what happens when you when you took that big decompression breath. Your lungs elevated. Your neck moves backwards to make space for your expanded chest. Your hip flexors are lengthened. Your shoulders are opened up. Even your deep abdominal muscles were engaged. All this from taking a big deep breath, which is pretty amazing. Correct breathing facilitates strong, powerful posture. And if you really want to correct your posture, posture requires power. You cannot do it passively. The second step. And one of the one of the second basics of foundation training is something we call anchoring. And anchoring is essentially a bilateral, which means on both sides, contraction of your inner thigh muscles. So what what how this works is I want everybody to think about a uh, tug of war. And when people pull a rope from both ends, you get a nice tense rope. You need you need tension on both ends for that for that rope to really get nice and nice and long and tense. And this is what we're trying to do with the body. When you engage your inner thigh muscles, what we call anchoring, it provides counter-traction to your pelvis. It pulls your pelvis down, so as you breathe in, your lungs are getting pulled up even higher. Your spine is getting tense and pulling up. So you're getting a nice counterbalance of tension, and that is what we want. The opposite of tension is compression, and that's how we live most of our life, being compressed. We don't want that. We want to be tense. We want to press back up against gravity, and that's Helping and this anchoring is really going to help facilitate that. So I want everybody, we're going to do the same exercise as before. The only change is the knees and feet are going to be touching together, and you're going to be squeezing them, and you're going to feel your inner thigh muscles start to get tense and maybe even tremble a little bit. We're going to do the same thing, thumbs beneath the rib cage, pinkies touching the top of the hips, and we're going to take three more big decompression breaths in each time again. 
breathing in as tall as you can. As you breathe out, keeping those ribs elevated. Feel yourself getting a little bit longer as your hips are being traction down. And we're going to take one more big breath in again. Really nice, wide, tall breath. As you breathe out, keeping the stomach nice and tense, keeping the ribs up. And then everybody relax. So now our third step, this is a, a great point, is integration. And to, to show you this, I want everybody to stand up. And I know no one wants to stand up, but please, everyone, uh, don't just stare at your computer. Have everybody stand up. Put your hands on the back of your chair. I know there's a few people still sitting. I can see you. Let's have you stand up. I'm just saying I can't see anyone. And we're going to take the position in position A first. So the way it works is you want your feet about hip length apart. And you want to be putting all your pressure in your heels, not your toes, standing really nice and tall. The hands are just resting on your chair. They're not really kind of grabbing on too, too hard. And the only thing we're moving here is the hip. You're going to pull your hip backwards about a foot. Everything else stays the same. It's almost like you're trying to close the door behind you with your butt. You're going to feel that turn on your lower back. And here we are turning on that whole posterior chain. From here, I want everyone to take a big decompression breath. Try and get your torso even longer. You may even feel a little bit of stretch in the hamstring. And now we're going to move on to our the second part, which is uh, in picture D. So I want everyone to turn their palms upward and to raise their palms up. all the things about part of that chain because it's hard to say where that is really coming from, where that imbalance is. So I discovered foundation training probably about two years ago and it was really by accident. I came across a YouTube video of Eric Goodman and Dr. Mercola and I was immediately intrigued by this. Um, Eric kept bringing up people who had found substantial benefits using foundation training. They talked about professional athletes, Olympians, movie stars like Matthew McConaughey, all the way to people who can barely walk because of their chronic pain. Literally thousands of people have been helped by using foundation training. So even more impressive, I thought, was uh, Dr. Jane Vernica, a former NASA director of life sciences, uh, said that the founder, one of our basic exercises that everyone pretty much just did there, uh, was the answer to her research on the negative effects of sitting. So that's a pretty big, pretty big testimony right there. That was pretty, sweet to be pretty big. Um, Two years prior to that, I'd gotten into triathlons, and I struggled a lot with recurrent injuries. I injured my foot, hurt my knee, I pulled a hamstring, you know, I was a mess, and I had no idea why. And, um, you know, after watching that video, everything clicked. I was like, all right, I got it. I realized I was broken. And my body no longer moved the way it was supposed to. I realized that lifting weights and stretching were not going to reverse my muscular imbalances. Um, you cannot strengthen into a dysfunction. Um, if you, you know, you can't like lift weights and think that that's going to fix your muscle imbalances. It's only going to further strengthen that imbalance. First, you need to realign the body and then strengthen. Within two weeks of performance foundation training, uh, I noticed myself standing taller. I had increased flexibility and I finally developed a sense of uh, body awareness, which I never had before. I remember starting in the gym. Um, you know, people show me lifts, and I just never could understand, like, what it felt like. I couldn't tell if I was doing something right or wrong. And uh, after doing two weeks of this, I finally got it. Like, it clicked overnight. And I was like, okay, now I, now I can feel it in my body. I can feel when I'm being supported and when I'm not feeling supported. And I could feel, like, if I was lifting incorrectly, I would notice the tension in areas where I knew it shouldn't be. So, for me, that was, like, a dramatic, a dramatic uh, turning point. So, as I... Uh, as I discovered foundation training, I was in medical school um, at the time, and I would sometimes come in with some back aches, you know. In 15 minutes of foundation training, my back felt amazing. 
and I've never felt anything like that before. As I started rotating with doctors, I noticed that they, they didn't really have a great answer for their patients with chronic pain. They prescribed pain medication. They sometimes made uh, recommendations about kind of physical therapy or chiropractors that wasn't very consistent. And some of the good ones, they, they may have given, given their pa patients um, some papers with exercises on it. You know, that was really about it. Knowing how much foundation training had helped me, helped the rest of my family who I had introduced it to, I knew I had to fly out and, uh, to Santa Barbara and get certified. And this is where I met Johnson, the man who we met in the very beginning of the, of the presentation. And uh, I met so many people like him whose lives had been changed by foundation training. When all other options had been exhausted, when doctors had run out of the answers, this was the solution they had desperately been seeking. And I currently work with clients of all walks of life. Uh, I've worked with young athletes. I've worked with people with debilitating pain. And the results continue to blow me away. Um, so this is a, a client of mine and a good friend. And uh, if you look at the picture on the left, you can see how this is when we first met. He was still a little stiff. Um, you know, not really the most strong posture. If you look at the right, that was about a month, a month and a half later, you can see just how much stronger the posture is, how, how uh, fluid he looks. And it's, you know, it's pretty amazing. And he told me, uh, while we were doing this, that when we, when he started out, he had a lot of, um, body aches when he got out of bed. He was really stiff. And he, after a month of practicing with me, he says, you know, like, I'm practically jumping out of bed. I don't feel stiff anymore. You know, and if you look at this picture, this is him. We were practicing how to do a proper squat. And for someone who's 83 years old, he's doing amazing. I mean, this really, like, blew me away, his mobility. And I'm not to say that he's a, you know, that he was, like, completely broken when I found him. He, uh, he, was, he was a healthy guy. He took care of himself. But even then, even over that short amount of time, he made some amazing progress. Uh, really great, great guy. And what I want people to think about is, is consider Eric back MRI. Um, <clears throat> so many people will will tell me, you know, I, my doctor said I have, I have two disc herniations, like there's nothing you can do for me. And, and I, I understand that we, we get very dejected when we're told, like, that this is it. You know, we'll, we'll try, we'll try up to a certain point, and then, and then we'll kind of give up. And it's, and it's actually really frustrating to, to try and keep pressing when we, when we don't think it's possible. But I want everyone to think about, think about Eric's MRI, think about Johnson. There are, there are ways to secure yourself if you ask enough questions. You have to keep pushing. And yeah, it's going to be difficult sometimes to find those answers, but if you press hard enough, if you ask enough questions, if you're hungry enough, you can absolutely make a big difference. And this is the point I want to drive in today. If you come away with anything from this webinar, let it be that you, you are the one responsible for your health. Nobody else. And it's never too late to change. No matter what you've seen, no matter what you've been told, the human body is remarkably resilient. When you give it what it needs, it will respond in dramatic ways. So what I want everyone to do is to imagine. Imagine what it would be like to do what you love, whether that be gardening, be jogging, playing with your children or grandchildren, without fear of injury or getting tired. Imagine what it would be like to go on long trips, to go for a hike on the beach or out in the woods without fearing if your back or knees to act up on you. Imagine what it would be like to be to feel 10 years younger. I am wholeheartedly confident that every one of us can achieve these goals and that foundation training is a phenomenal tool to help you get there. So at this point, I want to thank everybody again for coming out listening. And I think just by coming out, you, you've shown, you've taken that first step, you've taken that initiative, and that already bodes extremely well for you. You are the people who are going to make a difference. You are the people who are really going to thrive. And for more information, everybody can go and look at foundationtraining.com. They have a great testimonials, videos. You can find a trainer near you to hook up with. There are, there are plenty of people practicing this now, and it's an amazing resource. Um, I want everybody to try. I want to challenge everybody to do this.
a, a complimentary consultation with me. It's a 30-minute consultation, and uh, it's a big thank you to everyone for coming out today. And during this consultation, we can uh, discuss any challenges you may be having, your goals, and if it found, we think that foundation trading may be able to help you achieve those goals. And I'm also going to provide, provide you with a short routine and troubleshoot your form if you're interested. And all I can do is follow these instructions here. You can write them down, and they'll also be on the next page um, once we're feeling questions. So I think that's about it. Uh, if anybody has any questions, please uh, feel free to ask me. Great. Thanks, John. That was uh, very informative. Um, I, I, I actually learned a lot there, and it's something that I've always wanted to learn about, too. So uh, thank you again. Um, we do have a few yeah. questions, and if any other uh, of the listeners have any questions, please type them into the question box, and we'll ask John um, if we have enough time. So the first question I wanted to ask you is, what role does exercise play in mental health? That's a good question. Um, I think it's huge. You know, it it kind of touches upon that, that study I was talking about with Amy Cuddy where um, the, more, the more we do human things, the more we, we are active, the more that we stand in a certain way, the more that we have a uh, great posture. I think all these things play into mental health. And I think we're really starting to appreciate that um, the mind and body are very much uh, connected and that when one fails, the other one often fails. Um, you know, we, we can go into a, a big discussion about even like the, the gut and the mind connection, um, I mean, which is which is becoming even more appreciated now. But yeah, I think it's absolutely huge, and I think it's something that's obviously very neglected in our in our uh, current current world for sure. I, I couldn't agree more with you. Uh, I think that's a, a great answer. Um, we just had a question come in, and one of the listeners was wondering if this certification is available locally for other personal trainers. Great question. Um, they do them throughout the U.S. I know it depends on where you are. Most of them are based out of California, but I know um, they've had them in Atlanta on the East Coast, also New York City. Um, I think Utah, I've seen them before. They, they're, they, I think they tend to go around the coast, but absolutely. I think it's well worth the investment. You are going to learn a ton, and the, uh, it's, it's amazing how much benefit you are going to make in other people's lives. So I really couldn't recommend it enough. Would they just go to the foundation training website to find more about the certifications? Yeah, yeah. So I think they have maybe two left this year, and then I'm sure they're going to do a lot next year as well. It's, uh, it's definitely growing for sure. I think they made just on their 21st certification recently. So, yeah, they're, they're growing fast. Cool. Great. Um, another question uh, for you is, do you have any opinion on sitting on an exercise ball at work? That's a great question. Um, and this is, I'm actually going to take a weird stance on this. So, uh, I, one, I think, I think it's a good thing. It definitely forces you to use your, your cord stabilizers, uh, you know, to, to stay in a rack. And uh, it's definitely better than, than sitting in a chair. But I think the key is that humans are not, not meant to be sedentary. We're not meant to just be in one spot. We're meant to be moving all the time. So we're not meant to just, I mean, sitting's fine if you're doing it periodically, but we're also supposed to be standing, squatting. So really what I, what I think is best in a, in a work setting is to have maybe like a, um, a standing desk that can also go down to sitting. And then when you are going to stand, they have these new mats that just came out. I don't think they, they shipped them yet, but I know I ordered one. It's called Topo, T-O-P-O. Um, and it's a little mat that has different uh, contours to it, which, which kind of mimics what it's like to be outside a little bit more. So instead of just standing on a flat pad, this has different, um, you know, has like a dome in the middle and has a thing around the outside that, that give you different pressures at different points when you're standing so that you can constantly alter your stance. And that's really the key, I think, is try and make your movement diverse. You know, it's not about one position or the other. It's about diversity. That's what humans are meant to do. Great. I, I really appreciate that uh, answer. I think it was very informative. Um, I think this is going to be the last question. Um, what exercises have you seen help support the spinal alignment? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, this is definitely uh, one of them. Um, what I mentioned earlier with the Agassi method, I definitely think there's a lot of great science behind what he does, and there, there's definitely some overlap between what we do uh, and the Yagoski method, 
as far as spinal alignment, again, I, I think that is really the starting point, though. It's like you need to have a nice, stable spine before you can really start to do other movements. I think uh, looking into things like original strength is a great program, and so is MoveMat. So between those two, they're very uh, big movement-based uh, programs, and they're, they're really good about about that, establishing proper human movement. And when you move like a human, it's amazing how, when you, how you, start to, you start to fix a lot of those problems. Great. I think this is on your slide, uh, your previous slide, but is there uh, an area where someone can go online to see more of the exercises? Good question. Uh, yeah, you can definitely look at, um, just go to the website, foundationtraining.com, and there's also, so they have them there. You can also go on YouTube and, and find the foundation training page, and they will have a few. Some of them uh, are not, like, they're not all updated, like all the newest stuff. They don't really have up there. You're gonna have to like find someone for that, or buy the DVD. The DVD, the second one is is awesome, and I still use it to this day because you know I get lazy too, and I like to be walk through things. So if you're ready to take the plunge, I think the best first step, like try the founder challenge. If you're starting to find you really like that, buy the second DVD. It is it is well worth the investment, absolutely, and it's it's much more updated than stuff you'll find on YouTube. Cool. Well, I, I really think that. Um we might actually set up a one minute a calendar invite for everyone in the office here to especially those in the room right now there's a bunch of us that are, are excited to to take the challenge um, again I'd like to thank all of the Lucky Vitamins customers and John for joining us today um, please enroll in our upcoming webinars our next one will be tomorrow at 2 p.m. East presented by me and Dan for D. Francesca, uh, who is the National Training Manager at Ki Kiss My Face. Uh, for more than 30 years, Kiss My Face has been feeding your skin with naturally nourishing antioxidants. Um, so join us tomorrow to learn more about the benefit of antioxidant defenders. You can also search webinar on Lucky Vitamin to enroll and view all of our upcoming webinars. Right now we have on the screen, and we'll leave up here for a few minutes, um, just some more information and what was on John's last slide of his. Uh, thank you, John, again, um, and have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thank you.